Ever since I gave you guys a complete lesson on how to play Peg by Steely Dan on episode 160, you guys have been begging for more. So on today's episode of Weekend Wank Shop, I'm going to give you guys a complete breakdown on how to play another classic from Asia, Josie, which is one of my favorite tunes. So let's shine up the battle apple and learn some big ass chords. <laughs> Hey there kids and welcome to a brand new installment of Weekend Wank Shop. Here's your best buddy, Uncle Ben. You know there's a reason that your mom's super cool boyfriend thinks that Steely Dan is so freaking awesome and it's because they are. I have learned so much about chords and harmony and all kinds of stuff by learning just a handful of Steely's tunes over the past few years. So if you're the kind of guitar player that's looking to expand your vocabulary and learn some cool harmonic tricks and everything, you can never lose with learning some Steely Dan tunes. On today's lesson, we're gonna be taking a look at how to play all the chord stuff in Josie, which is in the neighborhood of E minor. Features a lot of Steely's kind of signature chord moves and stuff like that, so lots of good stuff to learn here. And as always, you guys can find full tabs for everything we're talking about today over on my Instagram page, at Ben Eller Guitars. Search for hashtag Weekend Shop 221. Find the tabs, learn how to play it, then upload a video of yourself shredding through it, along with the hashtag Weekend Wank Shop. And of course, if you want to say thanks for all the free videos and stuff, you guys be sure to support me on my new Patreon page over at patreon.com slash Guitars. I really appreciate it. Thanks a bunch. Just a quick disclaimer, I'm not going to swear to you that these are like the exact guitar parts that are on the record. The mix is really dense, there's all kinds of keys and stuff like that. So it's hard to say exactly what the guitar is playing on some of these chords, but this is just like how I play the tune in order to capture as much of the kind of harmonic content as I can so that, you know, if you're not playing with like a 12 piece band, you can still pull this off and make it sound good. I actually suspect that the guitar parts on the record are a lot more simple and less dense than what I'm showing you today. I think a lot of it is just basic, you know, major triads and stuff like that. I don't think he's doing a lot of super extended stuff in here. Cause you know, the keys are covering all that stuff anyway, so why double what they're doing? So keep that in mind. So first things first, let's talk about that awesome intro lick, which I love so much because it sounds like what would happen if Slayer played smooth jazz. Now we're gonna be using our pick and fingers for a little bit of this stuff. I'm gonna be starting off here on the second D and third B. And again, I played the D, then the B right there. Next, I'm playing the fourth fret on the D and the second fret on the B. So again, using my pick for my D string, my middle finger to play the B, okay? Then we're gonna have a couple of power chords. This is an E flat here, fret one D, fret three G, then an E, two and four on those same str two strings. So now I got this. Repeat the first lick. E flat, and then we're gonna play some different stuff. This is a B power chord, A on two, D on four, and then right here I'm going to the open D and second G. It's a D power chord. 
Now I see some people put it up here at five and seven. If that floats your boat, go for it. I like this because there's no sound of transitioning. You know what I mean? It sounds smoother that way to me. Same with the next lick right here. I'll tell you guys a little bit more about the fingerings and stuff I'm using here in a second, but first here's the, the next lick. Really odd, right? I'm playing the 2D. Then on the G, I'm gonna play this little descending line. I'm gonna play two, one, open. Then I'm gonna go here to the fourth D, the open B, okay? So by the end of it, you end up with this really kind of dissonant kind of harmony ringing out right there, which is really cool. And then after this, we have this series of really magical sounding chords. These are super dope. Now this first chord that I'm using right here is gonna be on the top four strings of the guitar, D, G, B, E. And all I'm playing here is three, open, one, open. I see this chord as being like an F major seven with an added nine in there. Uh, root nine, five, seven. Doesn't have a third in it. So it'd be really more like a major seven with a sustain. Anyway, next chord. Here's a really spicy one here. Again, top four strings. I'm playing four, three, five, five. Notice I use my little finger here to bar on those top two strings. This is like an F sharp, seven, alt chord. Next chord voicing we use is this one. Now for this right here, I'm playing again top four strings and it's five, two, three, two, okay? of a D over G sound, which is again something that Steely Dan does all the time. Think of this as a D chord with a G note in your bass, okay? And then the last chord, I really love the sound of that one. Now this is going to be, again, top four strings, six, five, six, three. This is kind of like an A flat major 13 chord in terms of how it all kind of comes together harmony-wise there. So you have A flat bass sound under there. Really mysterious sounding, I like that one a lot. So your entire intro part is gonna be the lick, power chords, the lick, different power chords, weird chromatic thing, then your four magical chords. That's a real fingering workout whenever you get to those chord shapes and stuff. Now one thing I'll say really quick about the fingerings that I'm choosing right here, uh, there's another really great guitar channel here on YouTube that, that I follow that I've always enjoyed the content of by my man Justin Sanderko, who is such an awesome player and great teacher. His channel is Justin Guitar. I recommend following that if you're not already. And he's got a full lesson on how to play the intro of this, and he says that the fingerings that he uses, he watched Larry Carlton himself play. So whenever you watch Justin's lesson, he's showing you the exact fingerings that Carlton uses. Now, they're a little different. It's the exact same notes and stuff, but especially when it gets to this part, he doesn't use any open strings. So the way that he used the open G, he'll instead put that note here on the fifth D. And then the open B is replaced by the fourth fret G. And again, that's fine, it's the exact same notes. I went with the open strings because they just ring together a little bit more like the piano voice needs and stuff do. So, you know, pick your poisons right there. Be sure to check out Justin's lesson, tell him I, uh, I sent you and he's a cool fellow. Okay, next thing that we get into is the verse, which first just grooves on this E minor seven chord, which is what most of the verse is based on. Now I'm just playing the bottom five strings of the guitar using a bar chord grip right here. I'm barring at seven from the A string down, and I'm gonna be playing seven, nine, seven, eight, seven. It's pretty common E minor seven voicing. I don't reckon he's using the low E string on this part here. The bass is staying pretty active down there, so I don't think he's muddying up the bass by playing that. And the kind of strumming pattern he's doing is just kind of a nice, loose, funky thing like this. Now what you'll notice is that this doesn't come in on beat number one. It comes in on beat two, so keep that in mind or else your groove will be all puzzled up. One, two, three, four, one, two, like that. And you'll notice I'm using a downstroke, an upstroke, and then two ups. Just like that right there. And I'm kind of squeezing the chord as I need it. I'm not just, you know, statically gripping. 
let everything ring out like that. You gotta think about it more percussively, you know? And most of the verse of the tune is based around that same E minor 7 groove like that. But they have a bunch of different chord stabs that fall on certain, you know, lyrics. So the verse just starts off grooving on that E minor 7. Two, three, four, one, two. Revving up the motor scooters, all that stuff. And then, that's the home to stay, park in the streets or whatever he says right there. And this is a series of four chords that we're gonna play. Now, this chord right here is a, a Steely Dan signature. You already used one of them earlier in the song whenever you played this right here. And it's kind of mysterious. There's a Rick Beato video where he just talks about what the hell this chord is, because you could look at it a lot of different ways, but it is all over the Steely Dan catalog. It's absolutely everywhere. Now the grip I'm using is like this. Bottom five strings, I'm barring from five, and basically what I'm gonna play here is A5, D7, G6, B5, E5, okay? Just like that. Now, most people refer to this as an A over D. It's an A triad up here with a D in the bass, which is not usually in an A chord. It'd be like having the fourth or the eleventh of the chord in the bass. Some people would look at this as a D root note with fifth, seventh, ninth, fifth. So they'd kind of look at it as like a major seven add nine with no third. It's really weird and it can function as either one. Steely uses this as a substitute for pretty much any chord. So you'll see it all over the music. Okay, so that's the first one we're gonna play here is A over D. Then just move that grip down a whole step. So it's three, five, four, three, three. This is now a G over C chord. And then what we're gonna do is play the four string version of that grip. Now what this is, is this is again top four strings and I'm playing five, seven, seven, five. So another bar chord shape right here. And this would be a, what would that be? A D triad with a G in the bass. And then you got a C triad with an F in the bass. Just move the grip down a whole step. So you've only got two, whole, uh, two different chord grips and they just move down on whole steps like this. Parking the streets. That part right there, okay? Some people also just play those grips moved up here to 10 and 8. I don't hear that high note whenever I listen to the recording, so that's why I'm putting them down here on the top strings. After that, you're back to the E minor 7, grooving for a little while. And then there's an A7. Now, I'm playing this A7 chord right here by playing, sometimes I'll hit the A, sometimes I don't, you know? But I'm definitely getting the 5 on the D, 6 on the G, 5 on the B, 5 on the high E. Just an A7. And again, you, you can use that open A if you want. And then we got a series of three stabs here. Girl say when, I think is what he says right there. This is back to your E minor 7 grip. Then, you remember the, the kind of A over D grip we used a second ago? Use that same shape, but move up here to the 10th fret, okay? So now it's a D over G chord. 10, 12, 11, 10, 10. Then move that down a whole step. So now it's C over F. 8, 10, 9, 8, 8, okay? So that section of the verse is gone. A7. Okay, back to E minor 7. Two more of those strange chord grips again here. Now this is going back to your D over G shape that we have here, top four strings, five, seven, seven, five. Move that grip up a whole step. So now it's an E over A, seven, nine, nine, seven. Top four strings, okay? And that's that section of the verse. Now the very last thing that we do here before we go to the chorus is we're gonna play E minor seven some more. And then you play E minor seven. And then this grip right here, it's like an F major nine, major seven and nine kind of sound. This is uh, middle four strings here. So I'm playing A, eight, D, seven, G, nine, B, eight. Okay. That's a really tricky chord grip right there to get to from this E minor seven. So try to hold that chord out as long as you can before you switch it up to right here. Okay. 
I guess now that I think about it, what you could do is you could just leave that first finger barring where it is. So rather than lift up like I've been doing, you can just leave it and it'll get that, that D string like you need and just you know rearrange these fingers to form that chord shape. That takes us all the way through the verse of the tune. One more time. High E's a little out there. Who cares? And the tricky one. Next, let's talk about how to play the chorus of the tune, which features so many awesome sounding chords. Now, it's going to start off right here with what a lot of you guys will recognize as the Jimi Hendrix chord grip, you know? Like. Only instead of having it on E, we're gonna have it here on F sharp. This is an F sharp seven, sharp nine chord. So an F sharp seven altered kind of sound. And the grip is like this, middle four strings, okay? A9, D8, G9, B10, okay? And with these, rather than just kind of like striking them all together, kind of glide the pick through them. So you hear each note in a row like that. So the first chord is that one, next chord is this. B7 sharp five. I love that sound. That's a spicy meat ball. Now what I'm doing here is I'm grabbing the low E7. I'm muting the A with my first finger. D7, G9, or sorry, G8. I need to work on my counting skills here. B8. That's that sharp five. That makes the sound so spicy and want to resolve to the next chord, which is your E minor seven. Same grip you used in the verse, okay? Seven, nine, seven, eight, seven, okay? And then that's followed up with that same F major seven add nine kind of shape you used at the end of the verse, okay? So that's again, middle four strings, eight, seven, nine, eight, like that. So your first four chords of the chorus here, It's really an obstacle course getting your fingers to contort into all those shapes. Good for working on your chord playing stuff. After that, go back to that F sharp seven sharp nine, your B seven sharp five, your E minor seven. Then we're gonna play an A seven. I like to use the same grip I used in the verse. Open A, five D, six G, five B, five E. Okay. Now after this, we're gonna do a series of kind of like two five one, you know, jazz moves here. A minor seven, again, I'm using open A, and I'm grabbing five D, G, B, and E. One finger, right? A lot of ways you can play that one. You know, some people don't like to use the open strings, but again, I just think they kind of make these chords bridge together and sound a little smoother if you do. Next chord's a D seven. So I'm only playing the bottom five strings here. Fifth fret uh, bar, five, seven, five, seven, five. Okay, five, seven, five, seven, five, D seven. Next is gonna be a G major seven, which again, I'm using my first finger here on the bass, third fret low E, muting the A, uh, fourth D, fourth G, and third B. So you'll notice I've got my middle finger really tucked in right here to get to that third fret B D note. You could also play this with your thumb over top and make a grip that feels like an A minor kind of shape here if you wanted to. Whatever floats your boat. And then a C major seven. So this is me barring the third fret, A string down. I'm gonna play three, five, four, five, three. Three, five, four, five, three, okay? So those four chords were A minor seven, D seven, G major seven, C major seven. That's the raw flame live wire part. And then for the Praise Like a Roman with their eyes on fire part, you're gonna have two more of these Jimi Hendrix uh, sharp nine kind of chord shapes here. First one's here is the same one you already used here. Nine, eight, nine, ten. F sharp seven, sharp nine. And then after this, take that grip down here to the second position. So I've got two, one, two, three. So this would be a B seven sharp nine. Just like that. And that is the chorus of the song. So let's talk about that one more time here. Starts off with all the uh, kind of altered stuff up here. B, E minor, F, F sharp seven, B seven, E minor, A seven, A minor seven, D seven, G major seven, 
C major 7, F sharp 7 alt, B7 alt. One more thing too, whenever you're playing the G major 7 in the chorus, you can play this grip instead. This is top four strings, five, four, three, two, a little stair step kind of shape. I like this grip for G major seven for one, because it sounds really nice. The intervals are in order, like a lot of piano chords are, root, third, fifth, seventh. And then also too, this F sharp note is in the vocal. You know, whenever they're singing, la, 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 like that. So it sounds kind of nice because you're more in the vocal. You lose the bass note, but again, if you're playing with the bass player, who cares? And the very last thing to talk about here is that groovy little bridge riff, which is the only kind of single note riff in this song. Start off on your D5 to 7, then play A5 to 7, D5. Play the same thing again, and then on the low E string play 5-7. After this play the first lick again, and the two altered chords used at the end of the chorus. F sharp 7, sharp 9, that's 9, 8, 9, 10. And then the B7, sharp 9, down at 2, 1, 2, 3. That's what wraps up the bridge. Then your two chords. 2, 3, 4. Just like that. Behind the first guitar solo, it plays the verse changes. Behind the outro guitar solo, it just grooves on E minor 7. That is all the parts in the tune. Maybe one of these days, if you guys want to, I'll get into like actually breaking down the guitar solo and figuring out how to play it. It's got all kinds of cool stuff in there, and I think that's actually a Walter Brecker solo. I don't think that it is like a, a Larry Carlton solo, if I'm not mistaken. I think that that's one that Walter played. So let me know in the comments below if you guys would like to see that featured on a future installment of Weekend Wank Shop. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. You guys be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for new lessons every single week. And like I said earlier, if you want to watch my lesson on how to play PEG, check out Weekend Wank Shop 160. Learn that one. That's another really fun tune to play. You guys can follow me on Instagram at Ben Eller Guitars, on Facebook at facebook.com slash Uncle Ben Eller. And of course, if you like what you see, don't forget to support me over on my new Patreon page at patreon.com slash Ben Eller Guitars. Really appreciate it. Well, guys, it's been fun, but now it's time to get away from this damn computer and go play some guitar. Less clicking, more picking.